So Glenn, you started the Horse Radio Network. How do you see podcasting in the horse industry and in general? Well, in general, I mean, when we started 10 years ago, nobody knew how to listen. I mean, we were teaching people how to listen 10 years ago, and you could only listen on your computer. You couldn't listen on your phone. There were no phones. There were no smartphones. So people couldn't listen on their smartphones. And so we've come a long way. And now podcasting is just becoming super, super popular. We've done this, and now we're starting to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, but it's taken a, a long time to get there to that point. But it is there now. It's becoming mainstream. You're seeing it in TV shows. You're seeing more and more people just mention podcasts like you should know what it is. Do you find with the new generation, with millennials, it's more popular because they're used to Netflix, it's on demand, you listen to it whenever? we do get a lot of younger listeners, but our biggest core group coming in is now 40 to 60 year olds who are starting to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that's still our biggest audience is 40 to 60 year olds. And it's mostly women. Obviously in the horse world, it's 95% women. We started our show heels down happy hour a year ago yeah. uh, what do you think of it and oh it's great and you know when you guys brought the concept to me I was I was all for it because we didn't have any you know we have 17 shows on the network we didn't have any like that and even horses in the morning is much different than that because we have a lot of guests on you guys don't but it's just basically the three of uh, the th- three ladies talking at the bar then they've done a great job podcasting is all about the hosts it truly is all about the hosts People come for the content of a podcast and they stay for the host. Mm -hmm. And you've proven that. I mean, they're staying because they like the host. They have good rapport. Podcast create like a community around the show that's well, what's different I find about that yesterday, yeah right I think of what's different about podcasting as opposed to blogs or newspapers or magazines is the community develops and becomes much stronger and I think the reason that it becomes stronger on a podcast than other media outlets is because it's very personal and intimate you're mm-hmm. hearing somebody's voice and emotions you're hearing the laughing and the crying and it's very raw and emotional and you tend to get more involved invested in things that you feel like you're a part of. I can't tell you how many times I have people say, they recognize my voice and they say, are you glad? And um, they say, I feel like you're my friend and I've never met you. And that's <laughs> the power of podcasting, is because all three of the girls on your show, the listeners at home feel like they're friends with them, even yeah. though they've never met them. The hosts don't know anything about them. They know everything about the hosts. And they remember like yeah. the first oh, episode. Remember. Oh, in episode three, you gave a recipe. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we forget we've done it. Yeah. We've done 100 episodes exactly. since then. And they're, but for them, it's fresh. And it's really kind of freaky for us to go, wow, they, they really do know everything about our lives. Mm-hmm. And you think this is, a, this is a medium that is growing? Oh, it's definitely growing. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, there's uh, right now they just had a statistic come out that there's over 500,000 podcasts on iTunes. They estimate that there's around 225,000 that are still active. Mm-hmm. So that's 225,000 podcasts. You take all of the TV, all of the radio shows combined, it doesn't come near that number. And anybody can do it, that's the key. Now, can anybody do it well, like you're doing it, and make it entertaining and fun, and good sound quality and all that stuff? Not as many, if you listen to a lot of podcasts. So the key is making it more professional. I think that's our job as professional podcasters, Mm -hmm. is to make it more professional, more entertaining, and really put the time and effort into making it a quality show. And I think that's the difference of the average amateur podcaster and the professional. We have to kind of lead the way. And in the horse world, it's a, it's a traditional sport. So how do you make it more Well, well actually, that's popular. one of the reasons we started the Horse Radio Network is all the reporting in the horse world was boring. Yeah. And we said <laughs> we need to live, live. But yet we're fun people. So I'm going, why are these fun people who like to party and have a good time have reporting that's so boring. Yeah. So that's why we started Horse Radio Network was, and especially Horses in the Morning was to try and bring some light, lively entertainment to the horse world, and also to bring out the fun side of horse people. Mm-hmm. And I think we've done that. And then your show definitely has done. <laughs> it's that. like, yeah. Right. I mean, I that up. So we kind of start <laughs> the morning, you end yeah. the day. You know. And exactly. It's, and it's perfect. It is a perfect uh, relationship. But I think the horse world needs some levity. We do. We're a fun group. Yeah, we are. We just need to show the rest of the world that we're not stuffy rich people. You know, that don't like to have a good time or just ride our horses and that's the perception that people have yeah of course yeah because it's all the elite the, yeah. that gets put out there but yeah, you know when you talk to people we're not elite the people that listen to our shows are average horse owners that ride their horses on the trails and they're in their backyard or they've made board they're not competitors that's not most of who's in the horse world most right of the 
five percent are competitors. The rest of us are just horse hunters. But even if you compete, you could be fun too. Yes, no, that's true. <laughs> And we, and we want to show that. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know, it's not all serious. We can have a good time doing this. Yeah. And we love our horses. And you can't be fake. I find that you can't be yeah. fake. You can't. You can't. When we started, I'm a horse husband. I don't know a lot about horses. I've never trained horses. I drive horses. I've driven horses. So you have to just be what you are. If you try and fake it in the horse world, people know. You yeah. know, horse people are perceptive. They know you're <laughs> So we've always said with our hosts, just be who you are. Yeah. And it's okay. Jamie, my co-host of The Morning Show, probably the most popular host I have. She is just a, a horse owner and she trains young eventers and kids and she's l very lower levels and it's the stories that she tells as the mm -hmm. average horse owner that's made her so popular. But she's funny. And she's funny, yeah. And she's that girl that everything goes wrong with. That's <laughs> perfect for co host by the way. If you're ever looking for a co-host, look for the one that's a disaster. They're great co-hosts. <laughs>